What's up, Inquirers? Today we're going to be going over the situation surrounding Mr. and Mrs. McCluskey, also known as Ken and Karen. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel. You are watching Inspiring Inquiry. So as most people will already be familiar with, uh, especially if you have a YouTube, a Facebook, Instagram, really just an internet connection, you will be familiar with these two. The internet is referring to them as Ken and Karen. Now, their real names are Mr. and Mrs. McCluskey, and we're gonna talk about them today, and we're gonna talk about the incident that took place outside of their house. Their names are Mark and Patricia McCluskey. They are two personal injury lawyers who have, funny enough, actually recently represented somebody that was a victim or an alleged victim of police brutality. I haven't gone completely into the details of that case, so forgive me if I am not 100% accurate on whether or not he was found to be a victim of police brutality or if they were just representing him uh, as a victim of police brutality. Well, everyone's going to be familiar with them right now because pictures started blowing up around the internet when these two started doing what they called protecting their property when they found a group of protesters entering their private neighborhood and going down a private street. But before I even get to that incident, we're going to go ahead and talk about why were the protesters there to begin with. Well, they were there demanding the resignation of this woman. This is Mayor Lida Krusen, Mayor of St. Louis. And recently, during one of her tri-weekly addresses to her community, she ended up giving some of the reasons why people were asking to defund the police and what some of their requests were. In doing so, she not only talked about what they were asking for, where they wanted the money to go, and the fact that they didn't want it to go to law enforcement, but she also gave out their names and addresses after she stated what it was that they were asking for. Now, from what I read, the information that she shared on the Facebook Live video was public information that people could go and look up and find out if they wanted to. Now, there are people saying that this was a deliberate attempt at intimidation, trying to intimidate those people by putting their information out there. Two of the most vocal being older women, Kara Spencer and Megan Green, both of them calling her actions a deliberate attempt to intimidate. Now, in response to the backlash that she received from her constituents and from the older women, she had this to say. In an effort to be transparent and accessible to the public during the COVID-19 pandemic, for more than three months now, I have been doing tri-weekly community updates on Facebook. Tonight, I would like to apologize for identifying individuals who presented letters to me at City Hall as I was answering a routine question during one of my updates earlier today. While this is public information, I did not intend to cause distress or harm anyone. The posts have been removed. Now, after hearing that, this brings us to why the protesters were there. So they started out on a public road and started protesting. As they approached the neighborhood, videos can be seen of people entering a gate that is marked private property and then making their way onto the private road of the neighborhood right next to the McCluskey's house. Now, there have been some conflicting pictures that were getting uh, tossed around. Some were showing that the gate was literally broken and bent in half, while another video showed someone peacefully standing there opening the gate. Doesn't seem to have broken anything. At least the video didn't show him breaking anything. So we can't tell for sure whether it was open, unlocked, whether they broke anything or anything like that. But later you can see that picture. We're gonna take a look at the video and then I'm gonna put the picture up so you guys can see. So as you can see from the video and these pictures, it doesn't seem like when they were entering, at least at the beginning, that the gate was broken or torn in half. Now this is the picture that was being shown afterwards of what the gate looked like. Now I was reading online where someone claimed that it was their lawyer who actually took the picture of the broken gate, but I haven't been able to confirm it yet. So if you guys actually find anything on that, please leave a comment down in the comment section below telling me where it's at, where I can verify that information. Now there was a gentleman there that was uh, with United Press International and he was actually taking pictures of the event as it took place. He was in an interview where somebody was asking him about this situation that happened outside the McCluskey's home in which he had this to say. Suddenly uh, somebody said let's go and I looked over and uh, a gate was open for Portland Place uh, and people started running in there. Uh, I guess they were intended on going to the mayor's home. And uh, so I ran over there quickly to get people coming through the gate and uh, saw 
one or two people bending the gate down. So I assume that the gate may have been locked. Otherwise, if it was open, they would have just swung it open. Uh, I didn't stand around too long to uh, think about that because somebody yelled, those people have guns. So as you can see, the evidence that we have so far seems to be a little bit confusing. We have one video which shows somebody holding the door open, or the gate rather, and it doesn't seem to be broken. People seem to freely be walking through without having to, you know, bend or break anything. But then we see the picture later taken of the gate where it's like broken in half. And then we have him in an interview claiming that he's seen two people bending on it. So the timeline is a little bit wonky. Uh, like I said, we need more information. We need more witnesses to come forward, uh, more pictures, th things of that sort to be able to tell what happened with the gate when was it broken when was it bent because according to the information that we have right now it's just kind of hard to put a beat on when exactly it was bent how that happened or why it even happened in the first place if you have people holding the door open and people coming and going freely it doesn't seem like they're hindered well then i don't see why anybody would break it but then this guy comes along and claims that he's seen two people bending it before he had even gotten through the gate now we move on to the next portion how did the mccluskeys respond now, the McCluskeys also had an interview, specifically Mr. McCluskey, where he comes out to say that they were having dinner and they were sitting on their back porch whenever they heard commotion coming from the other side of the wall that surrounds their neighborhood. According to him, he went over to investigate and upon doing so, he noticed that people were unlawfully trespassing into their neighborhood. So he went to what he called arm himself and then he took to the front lawn to go ahead and protest their protesting and tell them that they were trespassing on private property. Both of them armed themselves. It seems that Mr. McCluskey was holding something akin to an AR-15 and Mrs. McCluskey was holding some sort of a small handgun. I don't, don't shoot me. I don't know that much about guns. I can't just spot a gun and give you the name of it right off the top of my head. But while it seems that Mr. McCluskey was at least trying to be somewhat safe with the firearm, he didn't have his finger on the trigger. He was holding it up and away from the protesters. He wasn't pointing it directly at them. Mrs. McCluskey can be seen going towards protesters, pointing it directly at them and basically waving the gun around. At some points, it even seems like she's pointing it at Mr. McCluskey himself without even realizing it. Here is some video of that interaction. So according to these snippets, really all we can see is the protesters walking by. A number of them are standing on the sidewalks, and it even seems like people who were purported to be the organizers were standing almost as a barrier between the McCluskey's home and the protesters walking down the street and the sidewalk. You can hear people shouting things like, let's go, keep moving, go, things like that. It seemed like they were actually trying to keep the crowd of people uh, moving along and from going on to the McCluskey's residence. It would seem that if they were staying on the sidewalk or on the street, regardless of whether or not they're on a private road, this may have some relevance to the legality of the McCluskey's actions, which we're going to take a look at here in just a second. All right. So if we come over here to uh, findlaw.com, we can look at different state laws. When we look under Missouri state law, we can see that Missouri recognizes the castle doctrine and allows residents to use deadly force against intruders based on the notion that your home is your castle. This legal doctrine assumes that if an invader disrupts the sanctity of your home, they intend to do you harm and therefore you should be able to protect yourself or others against attack. So basically what this is saying is if somebody breaks into your home, you can automatically assume that they are there to do you harm and by that standard, you can inflict physical force upon them to protect your home, protect yourself, or protect another. 
in the second part of this paragraph, it talks about specifically Missouri's law. Missouri's law is more extensive than those in other states because it allows you to use deadly force to attack an intruder to protect any private property that you own in addition to yourself or another individual. This means that if someone illegally enters your front porch or backyard, you can use deadly force against them without retreating first. Now, it gives the caveat here, while it's best to work with an attorney, I'm not an attorney, I am not a law expert, I'm not even a law student. I just read these things and give a layman's interpretation of them. While it works best to work with an attorney to fully comprehend the meaning of the statute, it is also useful to read a plain language version of the text to become familiar with the law. Now here you can see it cites the statutes that state this, and then it says justified use of force. Physical force may be used when individuals believe that the physical force used is necessary for the defense of themselves or others from an attack of unlawful force from another person. Physical force may be used when individuals believe that the force is reasonably necessary to prevent another person from committing stealing property damage or tampering. Now when it says right there reasonably necessary they say to a degree that another person in the same situation would also come to the same conclusion. Now it moves from physical force to deadly force. Reasonable belief that the force is necessary for self-defense or defense of others including unborn children to prevent death serious physical injury or forcible felony. The force is used against a person who unlawfully enters a dwelling, residence, or vehicle. So, according to Missouri state laws, any person that believes that there is an intruder that is disrupting the sanctity of their home can reasonably assume that that person is there to commit harm to them or their property or another person. Under that assumption, they are allowed to use deadly force. So the next step for us to do is to define what is disrupting the sanctity of your home. At what point does it become disrupting the sanctity of your home? Is it being on your lawn? Is it being right outside your house? Is it physically being inside your house? So we look to the words over here and it says this means that if someone illegally enters your front porch or backyard, you can use deadly force against them without retreating first. So this says if they are on your front porch or your backyard, which is kind of ambiguous because does that count for your front yard? And we also need to keep in mind that these protesters did not, at least from the video that I seen, did not go into the front yard. They stayed on the sidewalk just outside of the front yard where the organizers of the protest seemed to be acting as somewhat of a barrier between them and the McCluskeys. Now let's take a look at some case law to see how the state of Missouri has responded to this type of thing before. All right, so this is the state of Missouri versus Larry Goodine. Now, instead of reading the entire thing because this is a, a long page of the entire case and everything, we're gonna look at the part that is relevant to what it is that we're talking about and what we're trying to figure out in this particular case. All right, so in this particular court case, they had to explain a number of different things uh, to the jury, one of them being uh, first degree assault, armed criminal action, self-defense, and defense of third persons. Well, they also asked, because one of their points hinged on this particular statute, they also asked for the explanation of defensive premises. So when they prepared that, this is what they had to say. And it was in this state, the use of force, including the use of deadly force to protect premises is lawful in certain situations. A person can lawfully use force against another person in self-defense of premises if he is he or she is in possession of the premises and reasonably believes that the other person is committing or attempting to commit the crime of trespass. If a person has such a belief, he is then permitted to use that amount of force which he reasonably believes to be necessary to end or prevent that trespass. But in defense of premises, from a trespass, a person is not permitted to use deadly force. That is, force which he knows will create a substantial risk of causing death or serious physical injury unless the entry into the premises was attempted in a violent and tumultuous manner. And he reasonably believes that the entry was attempted for the purpose of assaulting or offering physical violence to any person in the premises. And even then, a person may use deadly force only if he reasonably believed the use of such force is necessary to prevent the commission of trespass and assault. So basically, that is going to be 
open to interpretation and if this does go to court and they end up fighting against it their lawyer is going to have to argue that they had a reasonable belief that those people were coming on and attempting to come onto their property whenever they did that were the actions of the protesters enough to reasonably make the mccluskeys believe that they needed to fear for the lives of themselves each other or fear that their property was either going to be trespassed on or damaged lastly i wanted to play a clip from you guys of an interview that mr mccluskey gave where he gave his side of the story as he seen it and the space that his head was in when he took the actions that he took i stood out there the only thing we said is this is private property go back private property leave now um at that point everybody got enraged there were people wearing body armor one person pulled out some loaded uh, pistol magazines and clicked them together and said you were next um, we we're threatened with our lives threatened with a house being burned down my office building being burned down even our dog's life being threatened. Um, it was it was about as bad as it can get. I mean, and there was, you know, I really thought it was storming the Bastille, that, that we would be dead and the house would be burned and there was nothing we could do about it. It was a huge and, and frightening crowd and they were, they broke in the gate and they were coming at us. So now to sum up, in this situation, the McCluskeys are protected to a degree under Castle Doctrine. They are allowed to assume that anybody interrupting the sanctity of their home is meaning to do them harm. Under defensive premises, they are allowed to use force and deadly force to repel people from coming on and assaulting them or to prevent a trespassing. The situation would determine whether or not they were allowed to use non-deadly force or deadly force. Now, does what they did constitute non-deadly force or deadly force? Well, looking at similar situations, according to the Supreme Court in Michigan, pointing a gun at someone is non-deadly force. The threat of using deadly force against someone, they ruled that that was non-deadly force. But, contrarily, in Alaska, they also have statutes that state specifically in the statute that deadly force is pointing a gun at somebody. So given the way that Missouri looks at self-defense laws, I'm going to err on the side that they're going to be more like Michigan in that they will rule that the threat of deadly force doesn't actually constitute deadly force like some other places do. So given the situation of things that have happened in the nation, given the situation that they came onto a private road, it could be argued, and it most likely will if this goes to court, that they were justified in their actions. As of right now, really, like I said before, it's open to interpretation. They are going to have to parse out the nuance when they go to trial as to whether or not they were lawful in the actions they took, whether or not it would have been reasonable with someone under the same circumstances to do what they did whether it was just brandishing the weapon as Mr. McCluskey did, or whether it was actually pointing the weapon at other people like Mrs. McCluskey did. Now in the snippet that we watched of Mr. McCluskey, he said that there were people right outside their property who actually brandished their own weapons and threatened to use them against him. Now if that is true and there is some way that he can show that, then that will be a slam dunk for him saying that this is the reason why he was protecting himself. Well guys, I'm going to end it right there. I appreciate you guys watching my video. If you haven't already, like this video, share it if you want other people to see it, and please, please, please comment down in the comment section below. Let me know, do you agree with their actions? Do you disagree? Do you think it was lawful? Do you think it was unlawful? Any and all thoughts, I would appreciate to hear them. As always, you guys are watching Inspiring Inquiry.